Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Hello. All right. I have a couple things at the top. So I want to begin by sharing that Biden-Harris administration is announcing a significant, a significant new security assistance package for Ukraine as the United States continues to support Ukraine's defense against Russia's invasion. This announcement is the seventh security assistance package that President Biden has authorized to help Ukraine since he signed the National Security Supplemental in April. It includes missiles for Ukraine's air defense systems, ammunition for high mobility artillery, rocket systems, artillery rounds, and other critical capabilities that are being drawn down from U.S. stocks using presidential drawdown authorities. It also includes new funding that the Department of Defense will use to purchase interceptors for Patriot and NASM air defense systems to help Ukraine defend its troops and its cities against Russia's aerial attacks. The United States support over the last few months has been critical in helping Ukraine defend their territory against Russia's advances. Thanks to the bravery of the Ukrainian forces and weapons deliver deliveries from the United States and our allies and partners, it is increasingly clear the Russian offensive around Kharkiv has been a failure. And as President Biden has been clear, we are committed to continuing to stand with Ukraine until they prevail against Russian aggression. So I want to share a, a bit of additional updates before uh, for all of you before we start. I know some of all, some of you have been trying to confirm some of this information that I'm about to share. So I'll do it, it right now at the podium. The president has connected with Leader Jeffries, Senate Majority Leader Schumer. Representative Clyburn, former Speaker Pelosi, and Senator Coons. Today, President uh, Biden taped two black radio interviews that will air tomorrow morning. One is with Earl Ingram on Civic Media Network, which airs across Wisconsin, and one with Andrea Lawful Sanders on WURD's The Source in Philadelphia. And as Governor Waltz of Minnesota announced today, the president will meet with more than 20 Democratic governors. Now, as you know, these governors are some of our closest partners when it comes to creating jobs, building new roads and building bridges and so much more. And so the president certainly looks forward to meeting with them. And with that, I am happy uh, to take your questions, Sung Min. Thank you. Um, last night at the fundraiser, um, the president blamed jet lag for his uh, debate performance, um, but he was back stateside for well over a week. So does he really need more than a week and a half to recover from 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 traveling in Europe? And did he really, is that really what he thinks caused his poor performance? So, yeah, just a couple of things. And I do appreciate the question because you, you know, the president has certainly spoken to this many, many times about the debate. And so he had an opportunity to do that in front of supporters. And I just, as you just stated, he did that. He, he talked about, he owned that the debate was not his best night. Uh, and it, and he said himself, it's not an excuse, but it's an explanation. I was standing here yesterday and many people were asking why and what's the explanation. And that's what you heard from him. Look, the two, I think, um, in addition to the two major trips, uh, he was also uh, doing, continued to do his presidential duties. He worked late in doing that, and he also prepared for the debate. And on top of that, there was obviously the jet lag, as you just asked, uh, asked about, and also he had a cold. And you all heard directly, you heard, you heard from him during the debate, he had a hoarse voice. Many of you reached out to me and my team and some other members uh, of the White House asking what was going on. We confirmed that he had a cold. And so I think those two things, continuing obviously to do his duties as commander in chief, as the president. And so I think uh, some of you here in this room can certainly relate uh, to, you know, what 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 could happen when you're having an important moment and you're not feeling well and yeah and also you wish you could have done better and uh, so he took ownership i think that's important uh, and he's going to continue to make a strong case for his agenda and that's what you're going to see uh, and he was given an explanation and that's what he wanted to do he wanted to get that out there and for people to hear directly from him as he has been doing since since friday of last week there, I know you're calling it an explanation, not an yeah. excuse, but it does seem like there are new excuses since the debate of what no, went wrong there. I, I would say I don't think it's a new excuse. I think some of you, some of your colleagues reached out to us about the schedule. 
they, some of your colleagues asked if the, if the schedule was too strenuous or was it because of the jet lag. Uh, and so, and so we, we are laying out uh, and explaining exactly what happened. You heard from the president, you've heard from me. And it was, you know, indeed a, 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 a schedule where, you know, the president traveled six time zones forward to G7 in Italy, nine time zones back to, to LA and three time zones uh, for it again to, to DC. That's something that one of the, the print pooler on that day uh, laid out for, for, uh, for all of you and, and those who, who, reach, who read the pool notes. And, uh, and on top of that, he did have a cold. So it is an explanation. I don't think it is an addition. I don't think it's, we, we certainly don't want to explain this away. Uh, but you all asked me for an explanation yesterday. The president gave that uh, directly uh, uh, yesterday to his supporters. He wanted to make sure, knowing that all of you would get that information as he's speaking to his, sport, his supporters last night. Sure. You mentioned all the calls that he has made in your topper. Why wasn't he doing that on Friday? And why wasn't yeah. he doing this sort of damage control? Why was he waiting on doing that, waiting to do that until middle of this week? I mean, look. I, um, I I was asked a similar question by one of your colleagues yesterday, uh, and, and look, you know, the president obviously right after the bait, he visited four states in two and a half days, gave a couple of remarks. He met with uh, supporters, whether at the Waffle House or uh, in Atlanta at a watch party or in North Carolina, where there were hundreds of supporters there in um, in Raleigh, and so. He was busy um, dealing with, uh, you know, dealing with his schedule and also uh, speaking directly and engaging uh, with his supporters and then spend time with his family. I think what's important is that he has done this outreach. He's having these conversations. Uh, it is important to him uh, to do so. And the folks that I laid out uh, that he uh, spoke to are, are or some of them have been his colleagues. Uh, some of them have been uh, elected officials that he's known for some time. Obviously, uh, you know, uh, uh, Leader Jeffries is a new relationship that he has, uh, someone that he obviously respects. And, and so, you know, it is, uh, I think it's important to note that uh, they were strong conversations. That's something that the president told me and my team directly moments ago. He, he was walking around and we happened to see the president and he said they were strong conversation. And by the way, he looks great. The vice president's great. And they are ready to continue working on, beh on behalf of the American people. Okay, so. Thank you, Kareem. Hi. Um, is President Biden considering stepping down? Absolutely, absolutely not. And you heard, I think, I believe, directly from the campaign as well. Given the groundswell of concern from fellow Democrats, from donors, from supporters, doesn't he owe it to the American public to reflect on whether he should step down? I mean, look, it, very much into Sung Min's question and my answer to her question, where he had an opportunity to talk to supporters. He's done it a couple times at this point and laid out what happened on that night talked about how he understands and it was not his best night. He understands that it is fair for people to ask that question. But we cannot forget his record and what he's been able to do. We cannot forget how he has been able to deliver for the American people for almost four years. That matters too. And he has the most uh, historic record administration, uh, the most in modern politics and that should matter and he wants to continue to do that work and you know a lot of his what's on his agenda is very much popular with majority of the American people whether it's continuing to build a strong rec economic uh, economic uh, kind of economic policies. He's done that. Creating new jobs. He's done that. 15 million jobs. He wants to work on that and continue to do that. And so he wants to continue to deliver uh, expanding health care. All of these things he believes is important. Majority of Americans believe it's important. And his record, he wants to make sure that people do not forget about the record that he's been able to lay on behalf of the American people. Is there anything, Kareem, that would change his mind? Look, um, I cannot lay out something that would change the president's mind. He has been very clear, uh, and he's going to continue to build on the unprecedented record that he's been able uh, to lay out for the American people. That's his focus right now. Thank you. Catch up. Thank you, Karine. What does the president do outside the hours of 10 a.m. and 4 p.m.? Well, you heard him speak to supporters yesterday outside of 4, 4 p.m. Uh, you've heard, you saw the president 
land in North Carolina in the middle of the night at two o'clock. What was he doing? He was greeting supporters, uh, hundreds of supporters that showed up to, to cheer him on after the debate. Uh, you saw him speaking at nine o'clock or at night in New York in front of supporters. So he's been pretty, pretty much out there after the hours of 4 p.m. and before, uh, before 10 a.m. for sure. And so that has been something he has consistently done uh, over the past couple of days for sure, for certain. Have an afternoon nap every day. Let me be very clear about this. This is a president that wakes up every morning and puts the American people first. That's what he does. He does that every single day. That is his focus. Uh, I am not going to speak to sources out there, unnamed sources out there. That's not what I'm going to speak to. I'm going to speak to what I know, what this president does, and how he is committed to the work of the president, of the commander in chief. And his record clearly lays that, that, lays that out and speaks to it. Uh, and that's what he's going to continue to do. The American people first, the American people first, and delivering for them. Can you also clarify Sun Min's question? Sure. I mean, how, how is it that the president was still tired 12 days after returning from Europe, uh, had a cold, but then went to the Waffle House, and then the following day staged such a huge comeback that he gave those North Carolina remarks. Like, help us understand. Have you had a cold before? Of course I've had a okay, cold before. Okay, so you probably, well, well, come on, come on, Jackie. Let's be very, let, let's be. It 12 days I, after I, you returned, though. But and you also. jet lag yesterday. Hold on a second. There's a cold, there's a jet lag. You combine that. He continues to work on the, with, for the American people day in and day out, around the clock. Things happen. Things happen. And the cold thing is something that you all pointed out during his debate. We didn't even point that out. You all pointed out when you heard his, his voice being hoarse. Because he knew he had to push through. He knew he has to power through. That's what presidents do. If you care about this country and you don't care about yourself, you care about the American people, you care about delivering for this country, you care about how you're going to continue to work every day in and day out, you push through. We've all, we've all, We've all do has, that. Has all these Democrats We've who are saying they that. want to see him. But it's okay, speaks but, to that. But, but <coughs> we're not. We're not. We're not. We didn't share that information ahead of time. You all asked what was going on, and then we shared that information. We didn't use that. We didn't use that before the debate. You all asked, "Hey, is he under the weather?" And we confirmed that he was under the weather. He pushed through. That's what this president does. He is going to continue to fight for the American people. So he pushed through it. I think. I think anybody who does that, not just the president, should be commended. And he also said, you heard him say this on Friday, when you get knocked down, you get back up. That's what you saw. Is there any discussion that if the president were to uh, suspend his campaign, that he would also resign? Is, are there any discussions no, about no, absolutely the vice not. president assuming his duties? Absolutely not. Go ahead, Kelly. -O. Does the president have a duty to review data, like polling information that's coming in, donor information? the fears and concerns or anxieties expressed by Democrats, does he have a duty to review what's happening now? When you say and a duty, can you say more about the duty piece? He's absolutely running. Yeah. Um, well, he's saying that, and I'm sharing I'm sharing with you his his view. And we would invite the president to come here and tell <laughs> noted. us that directly. <laughs> noted, noted, Kelly. Um, but he's awake. Um, that's inappropriate. <laughs> As you heard from um, your colleague, the president of the WHA, that's inappropriate. Thank you, Kelly. The, my question is, information is coming in, an assessment is happening within the party. Does he have a duty to review that? Has he closed the door on reviewing the data? So I'm going to be really mindful, because obviously you're asking me about campaign numbers and data that's coming in. And look, what I will, what I will note is that uh, this is a president that looks at everything, takes in all the information. It's important to him to do so. Uh, I don't want to get into hypotheticals here. That's not what I'm here to do. Uh, what I can say is in this moment, we move forward on building on this unprecedented record that the president has been able to lay out for the American people. And that's going to be our, our focus. I, I, I don't want to get into hypotheticals. I don't want to get ahead of it into any 
anything else. Like closing the door to reviewing this over a period I, of time. What I can say is the president is moving forward. He's moving forward as being president. He's moving forward uh, with his campaign, as his campaign has been very, very clear about that. That's what I can. That's what I can speak to, and that's what I can say. And that is the president's focus. The president's focus is how does he continue to do that work, and anything else that we're hearing or that's being reported is absolutely false. Is the president telling people he's evaluating? The, absolutely the false. That is absolutely false. I saw that reporting. Uh, we were not given enough time to get back to that reporting, just a couple of minutes. And we asked the president. The president responded directly when asked about this question uh, because we said that we would. And the president said, it is no, it is absolutely false. That's what coming steps, directly from him. What steps would the president be taking or would you as a team plan to try to prevent uh, another episode in public that would be deemed worrisome? I would not call it an episode. I would call it we had a, a bad night, right? It was not his best night. He had a cold, he was jet lagged. Uh, you heard directly from the president about this. And when we get back, when we get knocked down, when he gets knocked down, he gets right back up. And that's what I would I, that's what I would focus on, the president continuing to be very steady and continuing to work on for the American people. Okay. But just to follow up on Kelly's yeah. question, do you think the president feels like the coming days are very critical for him as he, you know, you laid out all these events that he's going to be doing. Yeah. Are these, are these events very important for him to show to the American people that he still has the ability I mean, to be the, the nominee? I would say that this moment is critical regardless of the debate or not. We are living in an important moment right now. Everything is at stake. And I gotta be mindful because this is all connected to what's happening in November. Um, and I think any, any leader would say they always have to prove to themselves to, you know, to their constituents, right? It's, it is a day in and day out work. And yes, the president's going to have engagement. He's going to be out there uh, speaking to the American people. Obviously, we mentioned Wisconsin. He's going to do an interview in Wisconsin as well. Uh, we talked about Pennsylvania. But the president was also out last week. Atlanta, North Carolina, New York, where he saw supporters. This is a president that has been consistently out there talking directly to the American people. He understands, as you all asked me about the economy, and what people are feeling. He understands that they have to hear directly from him and he has to continue to do that so that he can lay out his agenda. He can lay out what he wants to continue to do. It's always going to be part of you know, the calculation, right? To continue to prove to the American people that he can continue to do the work and deliver for, the, for him on behalf, of, on, on, deliver on behalf of the American people. And, and Jeff had the, the staff meeting yeah. today. Um, can you just give us a rundown of really what he tried to get yeah. across? And is there a morale issue in the White yeah. House right and now? It's a fair question. And I do have a couple of things I want to say. As you just said, uh, the chief of staff, uh, Jeff Science, uh, did have an all staff call. He wanted to gather uh, the team across the building and acknowledge what the president said himself, right? That the last few days have been challenging. We've been very, very clear in acknowledging, acknowledging that. Uh, but we have had an extraordinary record to be proud of, and we know we have more work to do. The president says that all the time. He conveyed the importance of uh, executing on our mission. He talked about the importance of coming together as a team and also having each other's backs. And so, look, he also said, which I think was really important, and I think every staff wants to hear that the chief of staff door is open and is open to hearing directly directly from them, any questions or any concerns. And, you know, I think that's what you do as a leader. Thanks, Kareem. If there are so many questions right now about whether President Biden can do this job, why are we not seeing the president out there every single day in an unscripted way without teleprompters? Well, you're going you're, you're to see him today, certainly, and I know you're asking about the teleprompter. You're going to see him tomorrow, right, Fourth of July. He'll have an opportunity uh, to welcome active uh, du duty military uh, and their families uh, and certainly their loved ones here on the South Lawn, as he does every year. And I think that's going to
going to be important. He'll be able to engage uh, with them and thank them directly. Uh, and you'll see him in Wisconsin, and you'll continue to see him, uh, obviously, in the upcoming weeks. Look, it is not unusual for a president to use a teleprompter. It is, a, it is not unusual. That is something that presidents have done in the past. Uh, I think what we also have to remember, and I'll keep saying this because I think it's important to not forget that he has the strongest economic recovery uh, in modern in modern history. He has led a historic midterm win when everybody was talking about a red wave uh, and he was been able to defy that uh, and deliver uh, by leading, by being a leader, right? Uh, obviously do, doing the midterms as a democratic leader. And he's gonna continue to work to get lower, lower costs. And I think that matters. I think his record certainly matters. And you are going to see him, continue to see him, uh, you know, having interviews. He's gonna do ABC, as you know, with George Stephanopoulos, one of your colleagues. Uh, that's not scripted. Uh, and he has done more than 40 interviews that have not been uh, scripted. Interviews do not have a script uh, this year alone. So. Uh, you'll see him out there connecting with the engaging with the American people and I think that's important but again we're now almost a week after the debate why doesn't the president just come here right now and answer for himself at this briefing room all of the well, questions that well, we have. you 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 asked me a couple things you asked uh, when when is he going to be unscripted he has been when he went to visit a, a diner in uh, 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 a couple of days ago at the Waffle House when he uh, met with um, met with some of the supporters in Atlanta, North Carolina, where hundreds of supporters showed up. He certainly had an opportunity to engage. On Friday, he's going to be taking uh, some questions from one of your colleagues. I think that's going to be important, and we're going to continue to engage with all of you. Uh, we're going to certainly uh, looking forward to doing that. He'll have a press conference uh, next week. Uh, at NATO press conference, a big boy press conference, as Justin from Bloomberg stated yesterday. Uh, and so we'll we'll do that. And he's looking forward to it. And Korean President yeah. Biden has always promised to tell the American people the yeah. truth. So can you be straight with us yeah. and the American people? Is the president clear eyed about what it takes to stay in the race and what it would take for him to drop out? The president is clear eyed and he is staying in the race. I don't have anything else beyond that. He is staying, he's staying in the race. That is what the president is promised to do. That is what he wants to continue to work uh, on the successes that he's had. His record is unpre unprecedented record. And that is what the president is focused on, continuing to deliver for the American people. And he looks forward to doing that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, the NATO summit is coming up next week. Yes, is the president frustrated that this debate over the presidential election uh, could cast a shadow over uh, your goals for the NATO summit. Has he made any effort to reach out to the NATO leaders that will be coming to sort of assure them that this isn't going to derail that agenda? So look, as you stated, uh, next week the president's going to host the NATO summit here in Washington, D.C. It is also the 70th, 75th uh, year anniversary of NATO. And let's not forget, NATO has become stronger uh, and has gained two more uh, countries because of this president's leadership and all very much important in, in, uh, in doing so is very much important in stopping and in, in helping to stop uh, Putin's aggression as Ukraine continues to fight certainly for their freedom and democracy. Look, foreign leaders have seen the president close up. They have. And, uh, and you know, and close up and, and personally for the past three years. And I think that's important to know. They know who they are dealing with and how effective he has been. I just talked about uh, how NATO has expanded because of his leadership, how NATO is stronger because of his leadership. And I think that's important uh, to note as well. And so, um, look, you're going to see the president... Um, you know, being a leader in front of the in front of uh, uh, these world leaders, uh, you're going to see the president continue to bring these world leaders together. Uh, and as it relates to uh, what's happening currently, you heard directly from this president. He understands uh, the criticism. He gets the criticism. He has owned up to it, but he also wants to move forward and continue to deliver on the really critical, important issues that the American people care about. When you think about NATO, you think about foreign policy, it is important to continue our world leadership on that, being leaders, and strengthening our national security as well. And that is how the president thinks about this day in, day in and day out. I just want to follow up sure. on the um, kind of questions about the outreach from the White House. Yeah. 
Um, does the president intend to make any other calls <coughs> on the ones that he's made today to the congressional leadership? And then, um, um, you know, Representative Doggett said he reached out to the White House before he yeah. made his comments and did not hear back. He said yeah. he wanted to speak to President Biden personally about his concerns. Yeah, I, I, look, I, I can't speak to the outreach that he made. I have not spoken to the Office of Ledge Affairs, so I can't speak to that. What I can say is the president ha certainly has looked forward to working with uh, Democratic leaders and congressional members over the past three years. I keep talking about his record, uh, certainly his record when it comes to legislation and getting things done. He couldn't have done it uh, without uh, Democrats like Doggett and appreciates his, uh, obviously his support and his partnership. I can't speak to outreach. It's not something that I've spoken to the Office of Alleged Affairs about. Uh, and look, the president, sorry, sure. you want to take that? <laughs> I know, every, he seems like he just brought me up in the briefing room. I have something to say. Um, I would also uh, note that, uh, look, I don't have any additional calls uh, to read out or to, to lay out. One of the reasons uh, that I mentioned it at the top, because I know some of you were trying to confirm and wanted to make sure that we, we got to you, uh, got back to you, all of you, about that. And as you know, he's going to meet with Democratic governors, as I just stated at the top. So he's going to continue to do engagement. It is important, some, again, some of these leaders, uh, he could not have delivered on this record, uh, on this record accomplishment uh, that he's been able to, to get done uh, without them. Uh, and so I'll just leave it there for I now. Think the, I think the question yeah. that we're all asking in yeah. different ways and different is, has the president and has the White House, have you yeah. sort of missed the boat in terms of responding quickly enough? I mean, I spoke to someone today who said it was too little, too late. Quickly enough on, on what specifically? In, 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 in explaining and, and discussing what happened at the I, debate and, well, and, and reassuring donors and, and so other people that, you know, he look, intends to keep running. Look, as it relates to donors or anything political like that, so obviously that's something that the campaign should, should respond to. But I, I would remind you that the day after in North Carolina, uh, the president spoke to his debate performance. He did. He talked about it. Uh, he gave, you know, his thoughts. He also stated that, look, I'm not as young, I'm, I'm not a young man. He said that. I'm not as a smooth talker as I, as I used to be. I, I don't walk easily as I used to be. And I, said, I, don't, I don't debate as well as I used to. He said this. And so he owned up to it in, on Friday, the day after the debate, that afternoon. Uh, and so we didn't wait. Uh, now, as far as engagement, no, that is something certainly the campaign can speak to more. Uh, but the president, in front of hundreds of supporters in North Carolina, talked about his debate performance. So, get him. Thank you, Crane. I uh, just wanted to clarify one thing. I know you got a lot of questions about this sure. issue yesterday. Sure. Has the president had any medical exams since his last annual physical in February? And got and we. We're able to uh, talk to the to his doctor about that, and that is a no. He hasn't had any kind of medical exam. No. Uh, so the White House has said no to releasing the full results of that annual. Uh, said no to making Dr. O'Connor available for questions from us. Uh, no to releasing any other information yeah. that would shed some more light on the president's health. I guess I'm just wondering if now is not the time for full transparency. When is? So I would say, MJ, to your question, that what we have released over the past three years, every year since he's been in office, has been transparent, uh, and it has been comprehensive. It has been one of the most transparent. We have been one of the most transparent administration when it comes to medical records. That is, that is what, uh, what we've been able to do. And I would add uh, that um, it, is not, uh, it is not the norm uh, to bring uh, the doctor to the podium. Uh, that is not the norm. Uh, and we have owned up. This president directly has owned up uh, to what happened at the debate last Thursday. He's talked about it multiple times and, um, and directly to supporters, directly to the American people. And what we want to do is continue to certainly deliver on the you know, the record accomplishments that we've been able to do. I understand that you feel like the White House has been thorough in the medical rec records that you all have released, but obviously you're getting these questions 
uh, in large part because of what we saw for 90 minutes on Thursday night and people's responses to what they saw, right? A lot of people expressing shock. So why not release more information? What would be the downside? Look, what I can tell you is that we have been transparent. We'll continue to be transparent. Uh, and that's what I can that's what I can share with all of you at this time and I did want to follow up on uh, what Sungmin brought up I think others as well um, you did get numerous questions yesterday yeah. about the president's debate performance uh, you didn't mention travel yeah. the jet lag the foreign trip so I think you can understand uh, why it was a little bit puzzling to hear the president mentioning that as his explanation yeah. for the first time last night. I'm just, yeah. can you clarify whether, when you took the podium yesterday, yeah. did you and, not know that that and was I, a And I would say that is my bad. That is part of, uh, that is part of, um, uh, uh, definitely part of the explanation of what had occurred. I did, I did know that. I did, did know that. Did know I did. I did know that. Uh, but we were so focused. I was so focused on the call on the cold, and that's what I kind of leaned into and talked about. But yes, his schedule did have something to do with it. It was the schedule and the cold, and I did. I was aware of that yesterday. Can I just ask? Yeah, sure. One other broader question: uh, the president, and I know you will remember this. Back yeah. in 2020, uh, referred to himself as a transition candidate. He also said back then that he would be a bridge to the next generation of Democratic leaders. Does he still believe that? Yes, I mean, I think his statement stands. I mean, one of the reasons why he picked the vice president, President Kamala Harris, is because she is indeed the future of the party. Uh, and he's very proud to have partnered with her and continue to partner with her and delivering an unprecedented record for the American people. And I think he's gonna continue certainly to do that. They're gonna do that as partners. Like I said, I just saw them before walking into the briefing room. We, they stopped by to talk to me and my team and they're ready to go. They're ready to, to continue. So the transition would happen in eight years? I mean, I'm not, gonna, not four. I'm, not, I'm not gonna get into uh, speculation from here, uh, but you ask me if that his remarks and statements still stands. Yes, it still does. Michael. Yeah, next screen. If President Biden was fatigued during the de debate, because of overseas travel that was 12 days beforehand, like he said he was last night. Doesn't that raise questions about his ability to effectively serve another a second term until he's 86 years well, old? Well, I mean, look, I think there's multiple factors here to consider. There was the travel, the travel led to a cold, uh, and I think that matters as well. And I think we've all been there. We've all been there. Uh, it is not unusual. And what the president did is he pushed through. He did, he pushed forward and he pushed through. And that's what you saw him do. Uh, and look, you know, you heard me say this yesterday and, I'll, and you heard directly from the president say this multiple times, when you get knocked down, you get back up. Joe Biden is someone who has faced, uh, you know, tragedies and he's taking them on. And when he does that, he gets right back up. And that's how we see that day. That's yeah. how we see that night. And what was his message to congressional leaders today? I mean, is he trying to instill confidence in them that in them uh, that he can run uh, effectively uh, for for his reelection? Yeah. Is that was that the purpose of? So look, I'm not going to get into certainly private conversations. He had uh, he he shared with me those conversations were strong, uh, and I think that's important uh, to note. I'm not going to go into details, uh, but uh, the president's going to, you know, continue to have those direct conversations uh, with uh, with leaders, with supporters, and he believes that's important to do. Were they united uh, with him in the call? They continue to be united, and some of them have spoken to this. They've been very clear, have spoken, have gone on television, spoken to some of you in your reporting, and said that very clearly. Thank you. Um, thanks, Kareen. Um, can you share any details on President Biden's and Vice President Harris's um, lunch today? Do you know if they discussed um, Vice President Harris potentially taking over? Do you know if that came up today? I mean, I just stated that the president has is not dropping out. That's something that the, ca the campaign has shared. So I'm just repeating what the campaign has shared. They regularly have lunch. Uh, and I'm not going to get into private private conversation. And I would also say uh, that the vice president spoke uh, spoke to uh, CBS just yesterday, and you you could see what she said herself. And I think that's important to note as well. I just want to also ask. Um, you mentioned that President Biden got the cold because of traveling. Yeah. So this cold is directly tied to him traveling, or is it just he got the cold regularly? What I can tell you is he traveled, then he got a cold. That's what happened. 
Ken Michael. Thanks, great. Um, you mentioned uh, a few times that the president's proud of his record. He wants to continue uh, his work and building on that record. Yeah. I'm trying to understand how how that's relevant to an assessment, uh, uh, self-reflection by him on whether or not he's physically capable of continuing. I think it's, it is an assessment. I think the fact that he's able to work across the aisle, get really big bipartisan legislation done, he's been able to get us out of the pandemic, able to get the economy back on its feet. I think that shows leadership. And I think that's important, right? He, he is making these decisions on behalf of the American people. And he's able to do that because of his experience, because of his wisdom. And I think that all that's all connected as well. We can't forget that. Just building on, you know, Weisha Kelly Kent's yeah. question on um, on self-reflection by the president. Um, you've mentioned as well that, uh, that he understands the stakes in the election, uh, and if the data is showing that he may be leading the party toward, you know, electoral disaster. Is there not going to be reflection? I, I, look, look, right now, i got to be really mindful. You're asking about a campaign. You're asking about data that's connected to the campaign. I, can't, I, I want to be really mindful here. Uh, and it's also hypothetical. And so I also want to be really mindful here. Um, what I can say is right now and where the president is, he is, continue, he is continuing to fight for the American people, continue to build an economy that works for all, continue to create good paying jobs, expand health care. That is the president's focus. That is the president's focus. Anything else related to the campaign, I would refer you to the campaign to speak to that directly as it relates to data. I, I, that is not something that I can, I can't be a pundit from here. Got sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah, thanks, Karin. Uh, I have two questions from Bolivia. First, former President of Bolivia, Evo Morales, and also Argentine President Javier Milei have accused President Luis Arce of staging a self coup last week. Does the administration believe <coughs> any evidence if this was the case? So, um, look, I want to be really mindful here. We have seen the false <coughs> allegations of U.S. involvement in the events of, uh, of Bolivia on June 26. I know that's something that has come up a couple times. And so I uh, want to make sure that it is clear that the U.S. had no involvement in that. Uh, look, we certainly condemn, strongly condemn, uh, the deployment of army units. Uh, in Bolivia in any attempt to subvert a constitutional order. And we are going to continue, and I said this last week, we're going to continue, or the week before, stand by democracy and the people of Bolivia. And that is uh, that is where we're going to continue to stand. Can I have another question? Sure. Um, with the U.S. government and the Venezuelan government resuming negotiations today, um, I wanted to get, if you can give us like a clearer picture of what entails and how far the U.S. government is willing to go. So two, two questions on that. Uh, would the U.S. government be willing to alleviate sanctions? And is there any plan for Maduro to step down from power without fear of continued legal prosecution? So um, to your co your question about uh, the dialogue that's happening, we certainly welcome that. And if in good faith, right? The dialogue in good faith. So we welcome that. We're clear-eyed that democratic change will not be easy and requires serious, uh, serious commitment. So we remain committed to supporting the will of the people of Venezuela and a path toward democratic governance uh, via competitive and also inclusive elections. Uh, any specific details about that, I, I don't have any share uh, to share about the diplomatic engagement, uh, but we certainly welcome it in good faith, and that's what we want to see. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Karen. Oh, I, I okay. just also want to follow up on your remarks the president made yesterday yeah. at the fundraiser. Um, he said that he didn't listen to his staff. So what kind of advice did he get? Because it gives the impression that uh, his staff is asking him to, you know, slow down or maybe cancel some trips or have a lighter schedule. Look, um, I didn't get into the president specifically about what he meant by that, so I want to be really mindful. I don't want to get into that. Uh, but I think what the president was trying to say is that he had a schedule that was rigorous, uh, you know, the travel that he had to do, crossing multiple, uh, obviously, uh, uh, you know, going, going, <laughs> going from Italy all the way to the West Coast. Uh, and I think 
uh, as you know, that uh, that can be that can that can have a toll on anyone, whether you're 20 or 80. That can have a toll uh, on you. And so I think that's what he was alluding to, speaking to. Um, I don't want to go beyond that because I haven't spoken to him on on the other component of when he was speaking about his staff. Uh, but as it relates to certainly the travel. Uh, it was rigorous. He had a rigorous travel. We talk about it sometimes. I think I've mentioned this uh, to some of your, with some of your colleagues, that he has a, especially when he travels abroad, it's a pretty rigorous travel. We get tired looking at him uh, doing uh, his meetings and traveling. And so uh, I think that's what he was speaking to. And I don't think it, it has a toll on, if, regardless of what age you are, it has a toll on you, that type of travel. Okay. Uh, thank you. It, there's no question that international travel can be rigorous. I think the confusion is that he's still suffering from the effects of that nearly two weeks later. So I, I, can you articulate a little bit about, like, do you guys usually have accommodations for him after he does a trip, the, the, that he's going to have jet lag for that long a period of time? So can you, can you, when you say two weeks later, what do you mean? Well, the debate, he arrives back in the United yeah. States. 12 or 13 days before the debate. So his explanation for a poor debate performance is jet lag. So what I want to say is it's, it's the jet lag and also the cold, right? It is the two things uh, and that occurred. Um, and you all heard it in his voice when he did the debate, right? And it is not even something that we shared ahead of time. You heard it in his voice and we confirmed it. Uh, and I think that's important to note as well. Like it is the jet lag and the cold. But I want to be really, I want to be really clear here. This is not an excuse, right? This is not an excuse. You all ask for an explanation and we get, we're giving it an explanation. It is not an excuse. I don't want that to be the leading piece of this. As for the only reason we're sharing this because it was asked of me here and the president certainly wanted to give an explanation himself. And that's what he did yesterday. We want to, uh, we understand that it wasn't his best night. It wasn't a great debate. We understand that. And we understand what supporters saw, what the American people saw, and what you all saw. And so we wanted to give an explanation. So I don't want to get into this, oh, are you giving this excuse, not an excuse? We're giving you what our explanation was. We want to continue uh, to make sure that uh, we do everything that we can uh, to deliver for the American people. That's what we're going to continue to do. I also wanted to ask uh, just about the schedule again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because a lot, a lot of high-level Democrats, I think, were concerned with the debate performance, but they've also been uh, almost just as or more concerned about the response since then, mm -hmm. that he hasn't done more. He spoke for four minutes in public on Monday evening on the Supreme Court decision, and he spoke for about 10 minutes in public yesterday with the uh, emergency uh, weather uh, mm -hmm. situation. And he's um, going to speak today. He's going to go to Wisconsin. He's going to go to Pennsylvania. But, but this but, truly but, is an emergency situation. But, it's taking almost a week for him to sort of address it. When there's natural disasters, when there's other things yeah. happening, he wants to get in front of the cameras and speak to it. In this case, there seems to be yeah, but uh, I, I, multiple I, days. Matt, I would happens. disagree with you he did address it he addressed it on Friday in North Carolina in front of hundreds of supporters he addressed it and and he talked about an issue that you all ask me about all the time his age like he took it head-on literally head-on he didn't run away from it he didn't hide from it he said I am NOT a young man obviously I'm not as a good debater as I used to be I don't talk as smooth, I don't talk as, I don't walk as easily as I used to. He said it himself to hundreds of supporters in North Carolina. So I would disagree that he didn't take this head on. He did. He did. He, he talked about it in front of supporters. Who, one, which, which, had, by the way, one that, instance but, with but, that, but, but, and he's called six people. But, but, by, but by the way, that matters, right? Engaging with the American people and standing in front of them and being honest about that and talking about age. Again, something that you all ask me about all the time. He took that right on. Now, he is talking and engaging with leaders. That is something that he's doing. He's having good conversations with them. He's gonna meet with Democratic governors, people who, uh, governors who he believes have been really strong partners with him in delivering on some of these historic accomplishments. But, uh, you know, I, I, would, I would, you know, disagree on him not taking this head on. I mean, talking, going, being in North Carolina and taking that head on, obviously that's not the speech that he was going to give on Thursday, right? Before the debate. So he understood, 
right, when he got to North Carolina, that he needed to address it. And he decided to do it in front of supporters. And he talked about it. I'm gonna go to the back. I'm gonna come. Uh, Polling this week shows the president losing more ground uh, in the American eyes over immigration, over economy, and foreign policy. So does that, with everything else, diminish the position of the president as these NATO leaders are coming in for those meetings? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. And I said this moments ago when I was answering a question of one of your colleagues. These foreign leaders have seen the president personally, up close, for the past three years. Uh, they have talked about his leadership. They have commended his leadership. They have been proud to see him as the president of the United States after what they experienced in the last administration. Uh, they have, some of them have been even quoted uh, about what the president has been able to do uh, during his past three years. Uh, German Chancellor Schultz. I think that the that Joe Biden is someone who is very clear, who knows exactly what he is doing, and who is one of the most experienced politicians in the world, especially when it comes to international politics. The Prime Minister of Israel, Bibi Netanyahu. I have had more than a dozen phone conversations, extended phone conversations with President Biden. He has also came he also came on a visit to Israel during wartime, which is an historic first. I found him very clear and very focused. I mean, these are these are leaders that he has had extensive engagement with over the past three years. They have seen him up close and personal. The president looks very, very much looks forward uh, to uh, to hosting uh, hosting NATO next week. The NATO I ask you about the Supreme Court uh, quickly. So the comments that the president made on Monday, does the president respect the authority of the Supreme Court? Here's what I will say. The president has spoken often, very powerfully, uh, about the events on, of January 6th. He has. And his views on what happened on that day. And what you heard from the president Monday night, he wasn't supposed to speak. He came back. He saw, he, he felt so strongly about the decision from the Supreme Court that he came back early and wanted to speak directly to the American people, and that's what he did. It was that significant, he believed as President of the United States, to speak directly to the American people. And he said, this is a dangerous precedent. It is. It's a dangerous precedent. He also said and laid out that the Supreme Court has continued to take away long-established freedoms and norms, including a woman's right to choose, and now threatening the fundamental American principle that no one is above the law. And so this is why the president came back, and that's what he spoke out about. And uh, he fears for our democracy, and he knows we must do everything that we can to fight. But he can disagree with the ruling. Does he respect the authority? He respects the authority of the Supreme Court, and like you just said in your question, he disagrees with the ruling, absolutely. It is unprecedented, it is dangerous. And that's why the president wanted to make sure that the American people heard directly from him. Go ahead, Raquel. Thank you, Carmine. I want to do a follow-up about the lines that you were just reading uh, on foreign leaders, because it seems like this perception has changed after the debate. You mean the quotes that I was that I was laying out for all of you yeah. from Chancellor? Yeah, exactly. And because the Prime Minister. Uh, talking to diplomats here in DC, yeah. uh, they are telling me that the word diplomats they, or or leaders of countries. Diplomats work for these leaders. Okay. No, and I know. I just wanted to make sure. I mean, I, mean I was talking about the leaders. No, I hear you, but I'm talking about the right. leaders who have been on the record. Yeah, but after the debate, what they're yeah. saying, that after the debate, um, allied countries are worried about the future of the U.S., yeah. and that it is a scary and embarrassing time for the country, and that the U.S. leadership is at stake. And one said, imagine the watch party in Beijing and Moscow. So are they, are they yeah. uh, right to be worried? Look, there's a lot at stake. There's a lot of stake right now. There is. Uh, and I think that's why the president fights day in and day out on behalf of the American people. I got to be careful because you're kind of, they're, they're worried about, I'm assuming, the election and what's going to happen. So I don't want to speak to that. But what I can say more broadly, there is a lot at stake. And we see that. We see that with Roe. Uh, Roe being overturned, the Dobbs decision. We see that with what happened on January 6th. Our democracy and freedoms are at stake. And not only do diplomats and world leaders care about that, Americans here at home care about that. That is something that they worry about. And that is something that the president's gonna continue to fight for. 
gonna be careful. I can't, you know, get into hypotheticals, what will happen. There's a, obviously an election going on, but there is indeed a lot of stake. And we talk about this all the time, democracy, freedoms, a woman's right to choose. That is important. That is important to fight for. And what Republicans are trying to do, extreme Republicans in Congress are trying to do, put three national bans on abortion. That's what the type of uh, uh, legislation that they want to push forward. So we disagree with that. We're going to stand with the majority of Americans. Go ahead, Paris. Thank you, Corrine. Um, two questions. One is on NATO. So uh, on next week's summit, uh, does President schedule any important ballots with the uh, bilaterals with mm -hmm. the leaders, mm -hmm. especially uh, including Turkish President Erdogan? A second question is, we know China have been causing a lot of conflicts in South China Sea, Taiwan Strait, and East Sea. Yesterday, we saw Chinese Coast Guard ship harass Japanese ship near Senkaku Islands, also detained a Taiwanese fish boat at Taiwan Strait. What is White House reaction to those comments? So on the fish boat, we're obviously uh, uh, closely monitoring the, the uh, incident, so we're going to continue to do that. Uh, and as far as any bilateral meetings, I don't have anything to read out to you at this time. Uh, I believe NSC is going to do a call on Friday uh, to talk through what next week is going to look like with the NATO summit being here in D.C. So I would say, you know, uh, stay tuned, look out for that. Uh, and. Um, uh, and we'll have more to share. And obviously, when there is a bilateral meeting, uh, we, we certainly share that with all of you. Just don't have anything to preview at this time. Can I follow up? Has U.S. reached out to Japan and Taiwan offer support over those incidents? Uh, uh, well, I... Well, I don't have any uh, calls, obviously, to, to, to speak to at this time, but we encourage both sides to maintain open uh, lines of communication so they can get to a resolution here, and that's what we call we call for. Okay. Oh. Thanks, no, Thank, go ahead. Thanks, Ray. Um, I just wanted to get to your uh, answer to Raquel a few moments ago. You yeah. talked about there being a lot at stake, uh, you know, which yeah. I think... Yeah, really I'm, I'm trying to be mindful, I, I so, know, but... I'm also trying to phrase the question <laughs> in a way that you can answer. I appreciate that. Thank um, you. But I think millions and millions of Americans would agree with that assessment, that there's a lot at stake. Yeah, and I, and I agree. I agree. Right. That's what I said. It's not just diplomats, but it's also Americans here. Right. And, and the president and you and others in the administration have acknowledged he didn't have a good night at the debate. Yeah. Is, within his reaction to his own performance, does he think he let people down? Look, this is certainly a, a president... Uh, that I will say, and if you know Joe Biden, you know him as a senator and as and as vice president. Uh, he's very sensitive to how people feel, right? Uh, and uh, he's very aware of that. I think he has that IQ that is certainly incredibly important as a president to be able to feel people's pains, feel people's concern, and be able to listen to them directly. And you see that. You see him do that on a, a day on a anytime you see him engage uh, with everyday people, Americans. And I think that's what makes this president so unique. Uh, and I think also because he's dealt with so much tragedy and knows what that feels like. Um, and, you know, I have not asked him specifically that question, uh, but he understands the concerns. He understands what people saw. Uh, and that's why he's spoken to it multiple times. And he's spoken about his age, for example, multiple times, uh, not just this past Friday. Uh, and he gets it. He gets it. We get it. Uh, and so what we're going to do is continue to continue to look forward, continue to work on behalf of the American people. And there is a record here. There is a record here that we can speak to. There is a record here that matters to majority of Americans. We were able to turn some things around whether it's the pandemic, the economy, expanding health care, all of those things matter to the American people. And so that's going to be certainly our focus. But, you know, the president gets it, guys. He does. He gets what people saw and how people felt. I got, I got, I can't, no, but I can't. I really, really can't. I can't, I gotta, I gotta continue taking questions from the back. And I'm already being, I'm already being pulled. Go ahead, Phil. I'm already being pulled. Thank you. I wanted to ask you about, yeah. um, some of the things the president said last week. Um, last week? Or, yes. Uh, okay. Obviously, we 13 U.S. service members died at Abbey yeah. Gate during the Afghanistan withdrawal. And then this year, three U.S. service members died in a drone attack in Jordan. 
and yet the president said, quote, he's the only president this century, this decade, that doesn't have any troops dying anywhere in the world like he did, end quote. I get having a bad night, but how did the president get that so wrong? So I appreciate the question, I really do. And I was asked about this, I believe, in the gaggle on Friday, I believe. Um, and I said this, and I'll just reiterate this uh, now, and again, I appreciate the opportunity. Look, the president cares deeply about our service members. He does. Uh, and their families, their immense sacrifices that they've made uh, to take on the pr and, and uh, and he takes on his responsibility as a commander in chief, and that is something that certainly he will continue to do. I mentioned uh, moments ago that tomorrow on July 4th, he's gonna have active military members here and their families uh, to thank them personally. And obviously they make their families make sacrifices as well. And as you know, he attended the dignified transfer of the 13, as you just mentioned, brave service members who lost their lives in Afghanistan on August 26 uh, in 2021, and as well as the three who lost their lives in Jordan earlier this year. I was there uh, uh, with the president, and you can see how much it, it how important he he understood it was for him to be there for that moment to be there for the families uh and so uh, just want to want to be really clear about that because he has so much gratitude and we know that as a country we can never repay them uh, for their courage uh but to your question um the president was making a comparison between how many service members have died under his leadership versus in previous years. Uh, that's what the comparison that he was uh, making, and he is doing uh, doing he was doing that because he cares so deeply, cares so deeply about them and their families, and wants to keep troops safe. And that's what he uh, certainly wants to continue uh, to do. Let's not forget that for some time. Uh, he carried a, a, a card in his pocket about how many service members were wounded and killed in Iraq and in Afghanistan. That's how much it, it was a reminder to him, uh, you know, uh, the times that we live in. I mean, this president said this century, this decade, but, but setting that aside maybe yeah. on a, a different front here, what was the president trying to say when he said that he beat Medicare? He meant to say uh, he beat Big Pharma. I mean, that's what he meant to say. And then finally, you have um, more interaction with the president than, than most folks. You know him uh, better than most anyone else. Can you say, you know, do you believe that the president is as sharp today as he was when he took this job? Have what you I, seen any yeah. slowdowns? What I can say is this is a president who is strong and resolute in delivering for the American people. That's what I see. I see a president when I'm in sitting in front of him, you know, going through the day or talking about what he's doing next. Uh, he is someone that engages with us. He wants to know. He pushes us. He, pro he you know, prods us, wanting to uh, figure out, like, the bigger picture of whatever we're trying to explain to him, or even granular details. So he's as sharp as ever? Uh, he is as sharp as, as ever, as I have known him to be in my engagement, in my experience with him. And I know when I walk into the Oval Office or, or see him on Air Force One, I have to be on top of my game. I do. I mean, and that's just kind of my engagement with him and how it's been for the past couple of years. I know I have to wrap it up. I know. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Emily. Thanks, Craig. Bye -bye. I just wanted to ask, how is the president's health today? Is, does he still have his cold or is he feeling better? I, and then yeah. to clarify yeah. on the medical exam, because you said he hasn't had one since his last physical. He was on the way to the debate. The doctor was with him. He had a cold. He's 81. Does he not get checked out by the doctor? I'm just well, I can tell you he did, not have, he did not get checked out by the doctor. It's a cold, guys. It's a cold. And I know that uh, it affects everybody differently. We have all had colds. Uh, and so, no, he was not checked by the doctor. What was your other question? How is his health today? Does he still have the Well, I saw him it? today. My team and I saw him today. He looked great. The, and he was with the vice president. They both look great. Uh, I know uh, I was asked yesterday if he still had a cold. I think if he still has a lingering cold. Uh, and uh, But he is ready to go. He's ready to go. I kind of have to wrap it up. Go ahead. Uh, sources have told ABC that the president recognizes how difficult his political predicament is. So how has his mood been as of late? Has yeah. he been down? Has he I, been frustrated? I just saw, I just, I mentioned, I think, multiple times at, at this point that I got to see him. Uh, my team and I got to see him in the vice president. He, he's great. He's like in a great mood, ready to get things going. He's going to do the Medal of Honor 
uh, later today. He's going to meet with Democratic governors, uh, and that's kind of what you want to see, right, Did from your leader. Frustrations with you all I, after what I can meeting? say, what I can say is that he wants to move forward. That's what he wants to do. He wants to move forward. Acknowledge, right? Acknowledge what happened. Uh, be very clear-eyed about it, uh, and very forthcoming and honest about what he's what what you all saw. Uh, but he also knows that he's the president of the United States. He has to continue to work and deliver on behalf of the American people. That's what he has to continue to do. And that's what he's that's how that's how he's gonna move forward. All right everybody. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.